Hi, I'm Carl Kurlander, and welcome to Fade In. I'm here pinch hitting for Bob Scott, who will be back next time. Um, but I'm excited to be here with Paul Nanzek, my guest, who knows a lot about a lot of things, but we're going to talk a lot about stunts. And, uh, you know, a lot of us grew up watching movies. It looks so easy when you watch them. All this exciting action stuff happens, but you never think like, oh, I'm going to be doing that someday. Uh, I know you didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, but when you were growing up as a kid, did you have any idea what stunts were or how no, to do them? No idea whatsoever. Uh, it was something that uh, I only got started to get turned on to in, uh, toward the end of college, uh, helping out, like literally just helping out friends uh, with their student projects. Uh, but then once I came to Pittsburgh, that's when you know, my eyes started opening and I caught the bug, if you will. So when you grew up, were you a fan of Bruce Lee or any stunt people? Or Yeah, I was a huge fan of uh, Bruce Lee, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chuck Norris especially, um, all sorts of uh, action stars. And did you ever think, like, how do they do that? Or is, when you're watching it, you get so caught up, you don't think about that? Yeah, I was just so caught up, I didn't, didn't even think about it. I just, I knew that, um, I think like many young boys do, especially of that era, just saw it and like, oh, that's awesome, I want to live that. Whether you realize what that means or not, but... Now, did you have siblings, or did somebody get in fights with you, or did you get in fights with people <laughs> growing up, or no? Yeah, I, uh, so I've got three older sisters, no brothers, uh, so I learned how to take some punches and other torture real well. Um, I did get into a lot of scuffles uh, growing up. Uh, once I got out of high school, that all stopped, but yeah, I was getting into at least uh, one brawl per year. Did everyone say, hey, you know, you could make a living at this, or uh, <laughs> just kind of stumbled upon it? No, I really just stumbled upon it. Uh, I mean, I, my background, right before I moved to Pittsburgh, I was training very, very hard in, um, uh, in martial arts, uh, Sistema. And um, I became my mentor, uh, Bill Koenig, I became his uh, demo guy which just meant that you know, if he went to a symposium or a new student came into class and he needed to show someone, oh, you know, this is you know, what a hit should look like, this is what a fall should look like, that was me. So you were the guy where you go, like, yeah. can you go? <laughs> How did you learn to do that? Is that all part of the martial arts training? That, yeah, that was all part of the martial arts training. Um, and that was, you know, we were making real contact because it was martial arts as opposed to stunts, which are, uh, some people are, are confused about the two, but they're, they're completely different. So, um, I don't even want to ask you, does that mean when Bruce Lee was doing all that, he did real martial arts, but in the movie, did he do things differently? So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. He had to slow down uh, significantly so that the camera could actually read what he was doing. Uh, I believe he did make contact with performers as needed. Um, you kind of want to be, uh, use some discretion with that because you don't want to hurt people. But there were definitely scenes where you know, he wasn't hitting them and they were just you know, using camera angles. Well, since we're here talking Pittsburgh, I, uh, you know, singing in the rain in the beginning, Gene Kelly has a famous thing where he's a guy who can take a punch and so he becomes a stuntman and then they throw him into the movie. But when you were on your first set, when was the time that someone said, hey, can you do this stunt? Or what was the first stunt you ever did and how did that happen? Uh, so the first, uh, what I consider to be the first stunt I ever did for film was on uh, Razor Days, and it was by uh, Happy Cloud Pictures. Uh, they recently rebranded their name, I don't remember what it is now. But um, great concept for a film, uh, I had a ton of fun with it, and uh, the very first stunt was uh, getting shot. And we used pyrotechnic squibs, which is rare to come by anymore, uh, in part because they can be dangerous. Uh, usually it's either a digital squib or a pneumatic squib. So, so pyrotechnic squib, uh, and I know we have a guy named Steve Tolan here who does a lot of mm -hmm. stuff with, I guess, uh, the one stuff that's safer, but a pyrotechnic, is it has real fireworks or something, or how did, how did people tell you you're going to do this the first time? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, so the uh, writer, director, producer, Mike Watt, he reached out to me. Uh, we'd been friends um, through the comic convention circuit, and you know, he was trying to get me roped into his film. First time around, I couldn't make it. Second time around, he said, well, you know, I've got this death scene. Do you want to do a death scene? Yeah, I want to die on camera. Let's do that. So I didn't know, even if he told me in advance, I wouldn't have known what a pyrotechnic squib was at that time. Uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's basically the same charge as uh, like a 22 caliber bullet. Um, but they put a, uh, and we worked with the, uh, some of the Tom Savini uh, instructors. So they'll put a metal plate uh, against your chest, or you know, mine were all in my chest. Um, and then they'll put the charge uh, on the next bit and then uh, the blood packet after that. 
and it's all wires. It goes, it went down through my clothes, out my pant leg, uh, to a switchboard where the operator you know, threw the switches and the sequence that we wanted uh, everything to explode out. So for those who don't know how movie sets work, this is some pressure because you can't just do this every time. Right. We, so, we only had one take to do it. <laughs> and you were playing a character who got shot, or were you studying yeah. for somebody? So. No, I was, I, was, uh, I was Maver's Man number two. Uh, so it wasn't like a, a major part or anything like that. But, um, but yeah. So tell us how it works. So, so your first time through, they rig you up. Mm -hmm. You're kind of in a little bit, some sort of explosion. Did you think... It was going to feel something? Did anyone explain to you what's going to happen? Yeah, they were, they were very good. Um, it was Jerry Gurgley and uh, Jesse LeChalk who uh, were working the pyrotechnics on that. And yeah, they walked me through it. They said, look, you're, you're not going to feel anything. Um, you're going to be reacting to the noise that it makes. And, you know, don't screw it up because we only got one take. And then, um, you know, when you're reacting, whatever you do, don't put... Normally what you do in stunts, which I didn't know at the time, but you, you do it instinctively anyway, is you touch where, where the pain is. So if you're getting shot, you're touching the bullet hole. Well, in this, because they're actual explosions, you don't do that because then you'll hurt yourself. So, um, so yeah, I had to make sure, and I ran, you know, we, I ran through it in my head to make sure that I wasn't gonna cross that line and injure myself. Uh, but we also did uh, one or two dry runs just so that I, I knew the timing and everything, so. So, yeah. and then as that, the director calls action, camera goes to you, and then boom, like, do you hear anything or it just it physically happens? You know what, it, it happens so fast. Um, I will say the, the first squib that went off was uh, up here. And I, I think there was a little extra uh, charge in there, not on purpose or anything, just as it happened to be. Or maybe it was just because it, the way it was positioned, I don't know. Um, but it, it blew blood across my face, you know, the stage blood, which was great, but uh, it also, uh, my ear was ringing a bit, and I was just so nervous and pumped on adrenaline that, um, you know, I reacted. Looking back on it, I, I'm very critical of it. I think I could have done better, but, uh, but it was good. Well, it was good enough that you thought, hey, I could do this. Did you think at that moment I could do this for a living? No. Uh, I thought it was a tremendous amount of fun, um, but I thought, oh, you know, like, how often could, does anyone get work to do stunts? Uh, but then The Dark Knight Rises came into Pittsburgh, and uh, I ended up getting cast as one of uh, Bane's henchmen. And we did choreography, trained with some really, really um, talented uh, professional people from the union. And uh, that's when it dawned on me that, oh, no, this is a legit career you can Gee, you that, can that's on. like an early thing that you did, so it must have been scary. That, cause there's, so what's the difference? Tell, tell people the feel of the difference between like a small movie you done before, and then Dark Knight. Obviously, Christopher Nolan and millions of dollars come in and at stake. So, what's the difference between the way stunts pull, get pulled off on something like that type of set versus an independent? I would say, by and large, the biggest difference is uh, the professional. I don't say professional; that's demeaning to independents. But um, the the independent film sets uh, tend not to focus so much on rehearsals. Uh, usually, it's you know we've got. 20 minutes, let's do this real quick. And you know that still happens, of course, in uh, bigger Hollywood productions, too. Um, but I think, generally speaking, they're pulling from people who have you know, more training and experience in it, as opposed to just like, well, you know, I took karate for a couple months. Let's do this. Well, they're, they're also spending a million dollars a day, or well over that, so yeah. they can't afford for things to go wrong. So t can you just tell us a little bit about what the training was and from going to martial arts to doing something like as Bane's henchman, like, was it like choreography? Can you explain a little bit about how that was? Yeah, it was mostly choreography was what we, we focused on. Um, you know, certainly we, we worked on, you know, your reactions, because when you're in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, a stunt fight, it's not the person who's attacking that's really selling it. They're still important, but uh, it's really the person who's getting hit. Um, they have to have appropriate timing, they have to have uh, a, good, a good physical reaction to it so it looks believable. Um, and if you, if you screw that up, then it doesn't matter what the guy who's throwing the punch looks like. Well, what a great way of launching your career, or at least getting you really into the sense of what this could be as a career. Uh, speaking of which, this is probably a good time to like, show your reel a little bit, because you've done a variety of stunts. Yeah. Can you, yeah, we're going to show it in a second, but can you kind of just tell us a little bit of 
the type of stunts that you've done over the years and what we're going to see in the reel, and we'll come back and talk about it. Sure, sure. Yeah, most most of what I've done is um, you know fighting, hand to hand combat sort of stuff, um, and falling, uh, foot falling. You know, just from like a standing position type of thing. Uh, high falls are pretty rare, uh, but I, I have some experience from that. Uh, a couple other higher profile uh, stunt skill sets, if you will. Uh, like I did a body burn. Um, I, I did a bunch of really interesting car stuff, doing slides and chases and um, navigating through things, hitting your mark. Uh, a lot of that stuff, the higher profile stuff I did through the International Stunt School out in Seattle, Washington. Uh, a lot of really phenomenal people there, uh, very talented stunt performers um, who just were thrilled to be helping people have that skill. I'd like to talk to you about that. I guess we should show the uh, the reel and then let's talk a little bit more about how you refine your craft and what are the harder things and, and things like that. So if we can roll the reel. Wow, that was amazing. So ironically, most of the stuff you do there are things I've tried to avoid my whole life doing. <laughs> Falling and flying and hitting and all that stuff. So it seems like there must be a lot of on-the-job training. What, what of the things we see in your reel are the most difficult? And some things may seem deceptively easy or difficult. So what are the greatest challenges and what are the things you're most proud of in that reel and the work you do? Uh, I think I'm always going to be proud of that very first one I did with the, the pyrotechnic squibs. Um, so far, that's been in every iteration of, of my stunt reel. Um, I should just pause here for a second to mm -hmm. let you know that my brother, Tom Curlander, is an actor, and his first gig was in uh, Young Guns 2, where he got shot, and then he ended up getting a cast in Kindergarten Cop at the beginning <laughs> of that movie, and he was killed in that movie, too, and then he had to get handcuffed by Arnold Schwarzenegger to a dead body, and Arnold said to him, Man, I know those cuffs are tight, but you know, and it was really tough because you don't realize, even though he's playing a dead body, right. when they try to run, <laughs> it's like his arm is coming off. So these little things, and and what, even Arnold was very sympathetic. It's like a, it's a, its own fraternity, isn't of people yeah. who know what stunts are. So yeah, it's a very uh, tight knit community. Um, it can be frustrating trying to break into it because it's so tight knit, but it's it's that way for a reason because you're you are putting yourself at risk, even though a lot of it is smoke and mirrors, you know, just camera angles and stuff like that. Um, you know, if something goes wrong uh, and someone gets hurt, you know, that could be a lifetime of uh, disability or death or you know. Uh, and I know you've said this, I saw read an interview you did in the in the Tribune, but mm -hmm. people don't understand the collaborative nature of all filmmaking, mm -hmm. but in particular stunts the level of trust must be amazing. So, and like some of the, like I see you on the wires and those things, like yeah, you have to trust the people who are operating the wires and what what, what were the wires things for? I mean, what are they used for? Uh, you do that's it? usually for like ninja sort of stuff or superhero is probably the most common thing that would be used in now. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, and it's a ton of fun to do. Uh, I'm, I really struggled a lot with it at first and then a flip switch and I was great with it. But 90% of the work actually is in the pull team. So there's literally, and you don't see it in the clip because uh, they're framed out uh, of the footage, but there's a group of about five or six people pulling the cord up. So I'm, you know, flipping around. Um, and part of, you know, part of that's on but me. Five, but, I think but five or six people, be, even yeah. you're not a big guy or anything, but it's still, it's that much coordination of getting yeah. them to do that. That's yep. the right way. Yeah, it's not just as simple as, you know, you, it's not a bungee or anything like that. Um, yeah, you have to have a whole team to, to pull off something like that. Same for a fire burn, which is 
you know, if that goes wrong, obviously that's Yeah, that's you had really mentioned bad. that before. What does that entail, uh, body burn? Uh, getting loaded up with a accelerant, being lit on fire, not, not breathing. <laughs> Again, these are things, <laughs> don't try this at home. I think this is a moment we should say to everyone, please don't try this at home. This is a professional stunt guy. But, but you, weren't, you have to learn all this. So yeah. how do you learn to do a body burn? So I went to the International Stunt School uh, for that and some of the, you know, the higher profile stuff too. Because uh, there, there is a lot of stuff you can learn on the job. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with lear learning on the job either or just training on your own. But if you're doing, for instance, you know, a 45 foot high fall and you've never done it before, as opposed to someone who's done it you know, even just a handful of times, it's better to have that experience. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that was, that was phenomenal. So with the body burn, mm -hmm. uh, so you, you mentioned the school a couple of times. I know we have the Savini Makeup School, which is world class here, but in Seattle is where they have the International uh, Stunt School. Can you mm -hmm. tell people a little bit about what that is? And also maybe locally, if people are interested, I know there's some a stunt group here. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that training? And Sure, sure. Yeah, the, the International Stunt School is uh, phenomenal. It's got a lot of really great uh, instructors. They're all you know, active workers in, uh, you know, stunt performers in the industry or stunt coordinators. And so when you go to that stunt school, is it, is it intense? How many weeks is it? It is. It's three weeks. Uh, we only had two days off. Uh, we had evenings off, of course, but um, yeah, I mean, we, we worked hard and we played hard, and uh, I'd like to think that, that we all share uh, a pretty strong bond. Uh, even, I mean, not everyone necessarily liked each other, not everyone necessarily got along, but I think everybody at the end of the day. So what was the most challenging stunt in, that you know, learned in sun school? Um, for me, it was high falls, because I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> uh, and it's really funny, because when you're on the ground and you're looking up, you're like, oh, you know, that's, that's only six feet. That's only 10 feet. What's the big deal? But then once you're up there, you know, the entire perspective changes. So in movies, when you see people like jumping far distances, do they make six foot look like it's a far? They can. They can. Yeah. Usually, I think the magic number is it's like twenty two or thirty two feet, something like that, where you can kind of you know use the camera and sell, you know, any height you want. There are certain things like uh, I know Jackie Chan's done a lot of, uh, you know, jumping from building to building kind of stuff at least. Uh, and I mean, yeah, a lot of his uh, his Chinese films too. They did just like high falls without much safety, but uh, again, yeah. this is most of the stuff in life <laughs> I've tried to avoid that you end up uh, as you start doing this. Do you, you, I assume you get better at it, and yeah. So, are there some challenges that you have on your bucket list? I don't want to say it that way, but <laughs> but like, what, what are the challenges that you think you've mastered the most, and what would you like to do in the future? I think uh, reacting to to hits and falling uh, are my strongest points. Um, I definitely want to work more on, on, I mean, really everything. Probably high falls would have to be my weakest, just because that's something that I, I struggle with because of my fear. But so it, a lot of this is about like overcoming your fear and, and embracing what other people think is fearful. Um, it, you, I know there's a local, is there a local stunt group that you're involved in? Can you talk a little bit about sure. the local scene and if people wanted to try to get involved in, you know, their first time through and, and you know, again, this is a, its own breed, but talk a little bit about the local scene and, and some of the things that you've done locally and when yeah. people have do that. So, um, uh, you have to constantly, you know, practice your craft because it's a craft. It's not just a, you know, you show up and you do something real quick and you go home and that's it. Um, so, I, I've been working in the area for about five, six years, something like that, and uh, in that time it's it's been really difficult to find uh, there, uh, to my knowledge, there are no other stunt groups, so I, I started one on my own. Um, and it's just a loose confederation of uh, stunt people who want to train together, uh, work better together, and just improve ourselves and our craft. So what's the name of the group? Uh, we're called Steel Legion Stunts. And uh, can you tell people a little bit of like what the routine is of you guys getting together and if people wanted to, how they might get involved? Sure. Uh, so we, we get together, we try to do uh, at least once a week um, and just, you know, work on, on the things that we're interested in, uh, developing more. So one of the guys, for instance, uh, Zach Taylor, he's a phenomenal um, TKD, Taekwondo, um, champion, uh, international renown and all sorts of crazy stuff. So he brings to the table uh, some stuff. If we go over kicks, I let him lead that section of it. Um, yeah, I founded the group, but I consider myself just the team captain. There's no ego to it. Everyone's there just to help each other. Um, but yeah, we'll go over different things. We had uh, another gentleman, uh, Tom Mirth, 
uh, who's a uh, an actor primarily, but he's interested in uh, furthering himself in stunts. Uh, he brought along swords one day, so we went over sword play. And well, that's one of the things I was going to ask you: is that doing this for camera is different than just doing this for recreation. Yeah. Um, so you have to learn as an actor. I know actors have stunt doubles sometimes, but as some actors, Tom Cruise famously likes to do their own stunts. Um, as a stunt person, do you have to learn where the camera is and how to do certain things yeah. for the camera? Yeah, and that's actually, that's probably the most difficult skill to acquire um, and, and to do it well. Uh, because as you're performing, sometimes the camera moves. Uh, sometimes you move or your partner moves and you have to adjust and make sure that you still have that angle uh, so that the, the action sells. Because if it doesn't, you have to do it again. Now, have you done stunt double work? I have. Uh, only a little bit of it, but um, I worked on uh, The Chop, which is done by Friendly Zombie Pictures, locally. Uh, I stunt doubled a uh, Philip Bauer, who's an older gentleman, and uh, significantly taller than me. <laughs> so do you have to kind of get the actor's sense of what you're supposed to do in the scene, and then they call cut, and then you, is it like in the movies, and then you come in and do that? A little bit. A little bit. I mean, I spent a lot of time with Phil. Um, I paid very close attention to how he walked, how he moved, how he held himself and, um, you know, objects and stuff like that. And it probably wasn't 100% necessary, but, you know, it's a part of the craft and you want to make sure it looks as believable as possible. Well, speaking about as believable as possible, I believe we're actually going to try something. I am not, I am somebody who falls by <laughs> nature. Everything bad happens to me, but I understand that I'm going to get to do bad things to you. Is that what happens? <laughs> yep. What, yep. what exactly? Are, should we get up and do this, or do you want to talk us through what we're going to do, and then we'll show it? How, how, how exactly um, does this all work? So, um, yeah, we're just going to do maybe one or two punches kind of thing, and uh, uh, you'll be throwing punches against me, and, uh, and then I'll fall onto a mat, so it'll be safe, and we'll, we'll frame out the mat maybe, or maybe not. But. Uh, well, this will be very therapeutic because my <laughs> brother, even though I'm the older brother, he was always bigger than me, and don't tell him, but he could beat me up. He didn't realize <laughs> it for a long time, and so now I can at least try to act out a little bit and go show him some of my moves. But um, And before we go do this, I should mention, so what? you get in one way, but you actually have you know written a, a TV pilot that you've shot, and so, but no stunts, is that right? Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, my, it's, it's amusing to me, um, because locally people know me for doing stunts, but um, I went to college for uh, English. I got my bachelor's there. I used to be a journalist, and um, I've published a couple books and wrote for newspapers and stuff. So um, it's amusing, because the, the stunts came later in life. That's a, and and but, so, well, that's the difference in, you know, Steel Town, the nonprofit that I'm involved in, is... I didn't mean to do it when I moved back to Pittsburgh, but so much can be done locally now that you had to go to Hollywood before. And people, when they, the movies come into town, we give tax credits. The whole idea is to get local people working. So it's exciting to know that someone like you is, is making a living here doing stunts. I guess I, uh, I don't think I'll be quitting my day job, but I will go and take a punch now with you, I guess. So, so I guess we'll go do that. So. So I'll be up in a, uh, in a fighter stance like this. Oh, you're going to be fighting against me? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's exciting <laughs> already. What do you mean? You're actually going to fall? Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Yeah, so on that, when you punch across, I'm going to throw myself yes. onto the mat. Okay. So slip. What do you mean I slip? I've never heard of it. So it blocks it. within one street fight. When he throws it, you slip it. So you just That's what it's called, slipping? That's mm -hmm. slipping. And then you'll come across with like a, a haymaker or a hook. Uh, with your you, you have no idea who you're talking to. You, right? you know, uh, my whole thing was just come across the yep. Wait, but not on the left? left? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to me. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, I guess this is like a shot. We better, can we roll on this one? Or? We're rolling. Because yep. I'm rolling. just like so nervous now. Okay. <laughs> So much. Absolutely. That changed my life. That was amazing. Thank you. Well, that was fun. I have to tell you, I feel like a different man now. So, watch out out there when you see me on the street. So, um, I want to thank uh, our terrific guests here today, Paul Nancik. And uh, if you want to learn more about the stunts that he does and some of his projects, you should go to his website, dreamingdroids.com. That's uh, with an S, and uh, that'll show you his production company and also his stunt work. You know, I hope this is a good insight to some of the great things going on here in Pittsburgh and film. 
Uh, for this week, I'm Carl Kurlander, and this has been Fade In, and I hope you'll join us the next time. Thanks so much.